Hi, and welcome back to the Anatomy of Synergy. In the last video, we learned how to move between different data types. Now, we'll look at how to move data between different routines. Let's get started. So far, we focused on data defined in a record in a single routine. But there are several ways to move data between multiple routines. In this video, we'll focus on functions. But many of these details apply to subroutines and methods as well. To start, let's create a new function. You'll notice that the code snippet includes the nparams keyword in the data division. The section of the data division after nparams works like the data division in the main routine, and you can define local data for the function in that section. But the section above nParams is used to define parameters to pass data into the function. Parameters are the primary way to send data to a routine, and they can also be used to get data back from a routine. Note that the nParams keyword is optional, but it helps show where the parameters end and the local data definitions begin. A parameter can have any valid data type, for example, alpha, decimal, implied decimal, or integer. Although fields of these data types require a size value when you define them in a record, you don't need to specify the size of parameters. In fact, if you do specify a size for a parameter, the runtime will not enforce it. Instead, the size of the argument passed to the routine will determine the size of the parameter at runtime. For example, here, parameter 1 has the size of 12 to match the alpha field that was passed in even though the parameter was defined with a size of 5. Similar to this, instead of defining your numeric parameters as an integer, decimal, or implied decimal, you can define the type as numeric, or n data type. A numeric parameter can be passed any numeric value. Its type will be determined by the type of the argument. So, if you pass in integer data, the parameter will be an integer. If you pass in decimal data, the parameter will be decimal data. Now let's get back to our mainline program. You may notice that we're calling the function with only one argument, even though the function has four parameters. This shouldn't cause any problems, because all parameters for subroutines and functions are optional by default. To make a parameter required, use the required or rec keywords. Now that our third parameter is a required parameter, we'll receive an error when we try to build our application. So let's fix this in our main line. Since our second parameter is an optional parameter, we can use a comma to show where the missing argument would have gone. Then, proceed to include our required third parameter. In this case, we're providing arguments for parameters 1 and 3, but omitting the optional arguments 2 and 4. We don't need to add a comma or do anything for parameter 4, because it already follows all of the arguments we're providing. If you want to explicitly define a parameter as optional, use the optional or opt keywords. This isn't necessary for functions or subroutines, but it could be useful for methods, where all parameters are required by default. Another modifier you can specify for parameters is direction. In, out, or in, out. In parameters can be read but not modified by routines. On the other hand, a routine can modify a parameter if it's an out or in out parameter. This is one way for a routine to send data back into the calling routine. Parameters in subroutines and functions are in out by default, while parameters and methods are in by default. As you can see, you can use the direction modifiers along with other parameter modifiers like required and optional. The order doesn't matter as long as all modifiers precede the name of the parameter. In addition to modifying the value of parameters, functions and methods can return data directly using a return value. The return type of a function or method determines the type of data it can return, a D3 in this case. As we've seen in previous videos, the data type hatval can be used as the return type for functions. A hatval function returns integer values and is more efficient than a regular integer return type. 
A method in a class can also have a void return type, in which case it doesn't return any data and works like a subroutine instead of a function. In this video, we've seen how to define parameters for routines, and that parameters use the same data types as record fields, but they don't require sizes like fields do. We've discussed the numeric data type and some of the modifiers that can be applied to parameters. We've also covered return values, but there are more details about parameters that we haven't covered yet. In our next video, we'll look at objects and group parameters. Thanks for watching. See you next time.